This is not just a cursed staff tier list. This is the cursed staff tier list. This tier list aims to give you all the information that you need to become a successful warlock with actual builds and actual information that's going to help you realize and understand why those weapons are in the position that I place them in. If you listen quietly, the kings of Albion are trembling as we speak, or they sense a great warlock rising from the depths. That might be you, my friend, if you get to the end of this video. All right, boys. Let's start with it, let's start with it, and I'm curious to see your opinion. This tier list, this is very important to for me to mention, it's the best cursed weapon for solo players. So I'm not going to be looking into group play and how those weapons work in group play. And I want to take it very, very, in a very organized manner. So first of all, let's say Curse Call. Let's put it in the middle. In terms of Corrupted Dungeons, in terms of Corrupted Dungeons, Curse Call is and has been the meta for the longest time. If it works in Corrupted Dungeons, it's also going to work in the Mists. So S tier for Corrupted Dungeons, S tier for the Mists. Now in terms of uh, 1vx's let's say you're going in the open world and you want to try to 1vx to be honest i wouldn't put this as an s tier at the same time because the e is fairly dodgeable the e is fairly dodgeable in case you don't know what the curse call does besides everything that any other curse call uh, curse tab does so like apply dots and stuff like that and, in and deal insane damage with grudge it creates an aoe e this aoe e is very hard to dodge in an environment like a corrupted dungeon but the more open space you have the easier it actually is to miss that AoE. So I would say that even though the Corrupted Dungeons and the Mists can still take advantage of this build, and it's still, in my opinion, one of the S tier builds. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think it's an A tier in terms of Mists. So like an S tier in terms of Corrupted Dungeons, an A tier in terms of Mists, an A tier in terms of Open World. It's a fairly good Open World weapon, in my opinion. And in terms of PvE, I, I would say it's it's not bad, but it's definitely not the best uh, PvE. Like it's definitely uh, like among the the curse staffs among the curse staffs to be honest it might be one of the best pve options but compared to all the other options that you have in the game i think it's a b tier in terms of um, of its solo play pve so like you just go and do solo dungeons so i would say the overall rating should be an a tier because it's an s tier in terms of corrupted dungeon an a tier in terms of open world pvp like one vxs and mists and a d tier uh, and a b tier sorry a b tier in terms of uh, pve let me know guys what uh, what you think about this i feel like it's fairly bad and before we go further, let me explain some builds that you might want to use with this. With this, the classic Corrupt Dungeon build would be Curse Call, Mercenary Jacket, you want to have Hunter Hood, Soldier Boots, and Tedford Cape. For food, you use uh, Roasted Pure Mist Napper or Roast Pork. Those are like the cheap option and the fancy option. The Roasted Pure Mist being the fancy option with resistance pots and healing pots. And actually, I think you want Matlock Cape, not Tedford Cape. For Open World, you want, I mean for Mists, sorry, you want kind of the same thing. Usually, Mists and Corrupted Dungeons are kind of the same in terms of their meta like what works in a corrupted dungeon usually will work in the mists as well because it's kind of the same thing like it's a 1v1 yes the space is much more open but if your build does not rely on uh, having like closed spaces or traps you shouldn't uh, really have a problem transitioning your corrupted dungeon build into the mists now in terms of open world you might want to swap that hunter hood that i mentioned earlier with fiend cow so fiend cow mercenary jacket soldier boots you might want to swap that matlock cape with an undead cape an undead cape would work as well if not you can remain with the Matro Cape, and uh, for sure you want to swap the healing pots with invisibility pots in case you want to get away from certain. I mean, you no, you don't want to swap them. You want to have a swap. I mean, you don't want to properly just get rid of them. You just want to have invisibility pots in your inventory just in case, just in case, because uh, this build does not have a lot of mobility. So you gotta be aware of that. You gotta be aware of that. The curse staff in general kind of suffer from lack of mobility. Okay, so that would be the build that I would recommend you use with uh, curse call. Now let's go with curse staff. I'm gonna put it in the middle and. Let's discuss it. In terms of corrupted dungeons, this build is a BT, in my opinion, because it's very strong. But if people like a lot of people have counters for it, and it's not hard to counter it. Everybody has a hard counter in terms of their shoe slot ability. Now, the reason people cannot switch to the first shoe slot ability, which which would be dodge roll, negating all the damage of your E, basically, is because if they do that, you can kite them with your W and with your Qs. So people don't really want to do that. But there are some high mobility builds that might actually be able to pull that off. But those builds are very, very rare. The biggest problem that you're going to have with this is the amount of reflects and uh, 
cleric robes, mercenary jackets that people can use to heal up, resistance pots. It's very, very tough to pull this build off in Corrupted Dungeons, even though in terms of early game infamy, like just new players in Corrupted Dungeons and stuff like that, this build would slap. So it's not all the way down, it's somewhere in the middle. Like it's good if you're fighting new players, but the more experienced the player you're fighting against, the harder of a time you're gonna have with this thing right here. So I feel like B tier is an appropriate place in terms of Corrupted Dungeons. Now in terms of Mists, in terms of Mists, S tier. I know it's crazy, I know usually what uh, works in the Corrupted Dungeon also works in the Mists. The reason in this case it didn't go the other way around, so that if it works in the Mists, it works in Corrupted Dungeons, is because in the Mists you can have a beautiful thing called a huge IP gap. With this build, if you have a huge IP gap, and to be honest, even without, but with a, hu a, a huge uh, uh, IP gap, nobody will want to fight you in the Mists. Tier 6.1 build. Uh, of curse staff could kill most most people. A tier 8.3 curse staff build would kill everybody. Nobody would pick a fight against an 8.3 curse call. But usually in the mist you don't want to go with 8.3 curse staff. Sorry, not curse call. Curse staff because uh, 6.1 is more than enough for this build. Uh, I would recommend you go with if you want to go in the mists you can go with um, a curse staff, muisak assassin jacket, hunter hood or fiend cowl depending on how confident you are with the build. Hunter hood hunter hood allows you for more mistakes, but fiend cowl allows you for more outplays. And you want to have Tedford Cape or uh, Matlock Cape or Undead Cape. All of those options work. I would say Matlock Cape allows you for most mistakes, Tedford Cape makes you deal the most damage, and Undead Cape allows you to escape if you really messed up. So depending on how confident you feel, bring one of those three capes. Soldier Boots, I'm not sure if I mentioned, and uh, you want uh, Pork Homelt actually, or Beef Stew if you want to go like big damage, or Roasted Pure Mist Snapper, like a heal steal uh, build, like a life steal build actually, depending on what you want to do. Th this like the general setup depending on what you want to do. I would go with a base of assassin jacket, let's say hunter hood, soldier boots, matlock cape, healing potions and uh, roasted pure mist snapper. That's probably the layout I would go with just to have a little bit of sustain or maybe some beef stew if I feel particularly confident in my ability to take somebody down. But with this build in the mist you are gonna slap. Now in terms of open world, in terms of open world I think this is scarier than the curse call. I genuinely think this is scarier than the curse call because even though the curse call can hit more people the curse staff yeah no you know what curse staff is much scarier in the open world because you, you can have the armor piercer and literally melt people so yeah curse staff in terms of mists an s tier in terms of open world an s tier even one vx fights is still an s tier in terms of cropped dungeons a b tier and in terms of pve Ah, uh, no, it's not really the worst, but it's a it's a C tier. It's a C tier in terms of PvE. It just doesn't work, chat. It just doesn't work. It's really, really, really bad in terms of PvE because the E is single target. Now, uh, some things that you need to be aware of of those two builds. Both of those weapons have something very, very interesting. The E is non-reflectable for both the one-handed cursed and the curse call. Take advantage of that information. So now that we, uh, all of the other builds that I'm going to mention from now on, the E is going to be reflectable. So just for those two weapons, the E is non-reflectable. Make sure you take advantage of that. But people will still use reflects against you for your Qs, for your Ws, for stuff like that. But yeah, a general setup that would work for both builds would be for curse call. Mercenary jacket, hunter hood, soldier boots, matlock cape, and uh, yeah, that's the general setup. And for the curse staff, it would be curse staff, muisak, uh, assassin jacket, Hunter Hood or Fiend Cow, depending on how confident you feel like in outplaying your opponent and purging the right thing, and Soldier Boots. And uh, Matlock Cape. Matlock Cape as well, I would say it's a good option. Yeah. Right, boys, moving forward to the Damnation staff. In terms of uh, Corrupted Dungeons, this is a, a D tier. Like, uh, this one I'm gonna be skipping straight up because this is a ZVZ weapon. Damnation staff doesn't work in basically any other content besides ZVZs. So, it's not gonna work in Corrupted Dungeons, it's not gonna work in the Mist, it's not gonna work in Open World, solo Open World. I mean, you need a group because what the damnation does, it makes it so the enemies that you hit with their with the damnation staff E are gonna take more damage, but you're not actually dealing that damage. So, and it's a very long cast time, like it doesn't work in terms of solo play. So it's a it's a D tier absolutely. The next weapon on the list we have the Great Curse Staff. Now the Great Curse Staff, while absolutely amazing in the arena and the. Uh, no, I don't think it works in ZBZs, but in the arena it works very well. It's an anti-heal weapon, one of the best anti-heal weapons. Well, as a solo player, you wouldn't really have a lot to play around with this one either. In terms of corrupted dungeons, it could work a little bit better than the Damnation Staff, but you have so many other options that, to be honest, it's not really worth mentioning. I cannot put it on the same level as the Curse. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot I forgot to set this up. The Curse the, the curse Staff is supposed to be over here because it was S tier and D tier in terms of PvE. So over 
overall it's a B tier in my opinion a B tier weapon I forgot to mention that so the the great curse staff in my opinion has to be the same spot as the damnation staff doesn't work in solo play but now we have something that works now we have the life cursed staff now the life cursed staff is a very interesting weapon because it flies under the radar of a lot of people but it actually slaps in my opinion not as much as the curse call in terms of corrupted dungeons so I'm not gonna be able to put it in S tier but it slaps in corrupted dungeons with this weapon what you basically do in corrupted dungeons you apply debuffs to your enemy you debuff them uh, you apply dots sorry dots on your enemy you debuff your enemies with your W usually you use armor pierce or something like that and whenever they pop a um, let's say mercenary jacket or something that would mess up your rotation like a cleric robe something like that you just put Yori on them and that purges and deals damage but I guess the damage is not that important and it reduces the damage that they do so you can actually take much less damage from your enemies and it's actually really really good because you become very very tanky so it's very good in terms of corrupted dungeons not as good as the curse call not as good as the curse call because the curse call is also easier to play now in terms of mists in terms of mists I don't think it's as good as the one-handed curse staff or as the curse call which both were S tier options in terms of mists so I'm gonna have to leave this at A tier as well like I'm just gonna have to leave this here in terms of um, mists let's do it uh, organized so in terms of open world this works just as well as the curse call which was an A tier so so far everything is on the A tier and in terms of PvE yeah I would put it uh, it's better than the curse staff so uh, it's it's a b tier in terms of pve it's a b tier in my opinion so i would say the overall score of the build is a b tier like the the life curse yeah is a b tier weapon okay now let me give you the build that you might want to be using with this with this you want to use there's multiple options the most frequently used build is normally life curse staff muisak mercenary jacket muisak and mercenary jacket work very well together hunter hood and soldier boots it's kind of a weird thing because this build that i've just mentioned works with every other curse staff so yeah and with almost every other weapon sbi really needs to balance those items because they're way too overused like just look at this it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of funny when you think about it you're gonna see mercenary jackets hunter hoods and soldier boots everywhere J just trust me on it just trust me on it go on mother ledger and uh, check this out it's just hunter hoods and the mercenary jacket online basically that's it's not it's no longer albion online it's hunter hood online uh, but if you want to have a little bit more of a um, reflective play style and stuff like that and you want to be able to outplay your opponent a little bit better in my opinion you could also use your second spell on your jacket so that would be infernal shield like you don't use the mercenary jacket for the bloodlust ability the third ability use it for the infernal shield could work against certain matchups it's still the same jacket so you can just remain with the same jacket and swap your ability based on the situation but i would say with mercenary jacket with the third ability it's probably gonna be your best bet because you can also use your e to actually heal yourself because the e does a lot of uh, a lot of fast attacks which are very helpful in terms of healing yourself up with mercenary jacket let me see the mother edge open no okay boys then we have the shadow caller the shadow caller is amazing in terms of corrupted dungeons but it's very hard to play it's an amazing weapon tough to play so i cannot really place it on s tier even though i agree it's an amazing weapon because there's much easier options such as the curse call which was an s tier in terms of corrupted dungeons in terms of uh, mists Shadow Color, in my opinion, does not work. This is one of those builds that do not translate very well because one of the main reasons uh, Shadow Color, in my opinion, one of the main reasons Shadow Color works in Corrupted Dungeons is because the uh, surprising aspect of the build. You are usually using a plate armor or something like that to make yourself very, very tanky, like a soldier armor. You're moving very slow. You're not taking a lot of damage and you're not dealing a lot of damage. You're just withering down your opponent and your opponent cannot really do much in a Corrupted Dungeon setting because you can somewhat catch up with them. In the mists, people are going to be able to disengage with you and uh, i mean yeah this also is something that happens in corrupted dungeons but not as much in, as in the mists you're gonna have a huge problem with the rats in the mists with this build and i cannot help but compare it with the other options the one-handed curse staff was an s tier in terms of mists and the um, curse call was an s tier the shadow caller has to be lower than them so i would put it at the b tier in terms of mists so it was an a tier in terms of corrupted dungeons b tier in terms of mists now in terms of pve this is interesting this build is is an S tier PVE build. I know it's surprising, but never got to actually use it myself. I mean, I tried it once and stuff like that, and I really enjoyed it. But man, this build slaps in PVE. 
everybody knows this it's the pve killer it might be one of the best pve builds uh, out there it's very expensive because this is an artifact an avalonian artifact weapon so don't expect it to be cheap but if you can get your hands on a shadow caller most people that you're gonna see that do like solo clears of static dungeons and stuff like that in the yellow zone or in the blue zone they are using this weapon right here the reason people don't usually bring it in the black zone is because it's very expensive and there's much cheaper options that don't work as well but work you know like you can you can get a build with the shadow caller that costs you a few million silver or you could get a build with druidic staff that costs you 50k and most people go with the 50k option even though it's much much slower and it doesn't really allow you to farm that much it doesn't really allow you to farm uh, that much this build you can pull packs of mobs the more mobs the mob heal you get it's just crazy it's just crazy this is kind of kind of has the same vibe that the old uh, battle axe used to have if you remember before the e got a rework you used to be able to heal with all the enemies that you hit so like if you go do a group dungeon and pull the whole dungeon let's say if that was possible and mobs wouldn't lose aggro and you just hit one e on a thousand mobs you would heal for like a hundred k hp like literally you would heal for every single mob hit and that, that made it great the shadow caller kind of has that same vibe so in terms of pve it's an amazing 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 weapon but i cannot leave it here I absolutely cannot leave it here. In my opinion, it would be an 8 year an 8 tier weapon i would say an 8 tier weapon is uh, is appropriate yeah because like in terms of crop the dungeons and mists it was an a and b tier and in terms of uh yeah 8 tier would be right in the middle 80 would be right in the middle and then we have the last and oh wait and let me give you the build let me give you the build that you might want to be using with this one uh, ignore this one i need to place it the build would be so uh i, I guess you want to use this for solo pve so i'm going to give you the pve build for this you want to have shadow color you want to have muisak or mist color i think actually muisak would work you want to have have hellion jacket if you want to do packs of mobs like solo group dungeons and stuff like that or mercenary jacket if you want to focus on killing certain bosses let's say by ratting chests in the static by like killing the bosses you want to have uh, specter hood so you can refresh your jacket whatever jacket you decide to go with and you might want to have guardian boots to enlarge yourself to get through some damage or you can have some uh, leather uh, leather shoes that would allow you to um, recharge faster some of your abilities if you're using the second ability of any leather shoe refreshing sprint but i would say guardian boots with the third ability would be probably the best option that you would have with this because it would allow you to um uh, to have some mistakes to do some mistakes but to be honest i feel like the boots are a very flexible spot so whatever you want to use just use that one and in terms of the cape almost always you want to run an undead cape because if you go and solo statics let's say with this build it's going to cost a lot and you want to make sure you don't uh, you don't have like an insane repair build because you've died to mobs undead cape helps you in terms of that and of also if you do it in uh, the black zone it's a good idea to have that however if you're doing it in the safe zone maybe a demon cape would work amazing stay away from tedford cape that's all i can absolutely say stay away from tedford cape because that's gonna pull a lot of mobs so yeah depending on what you want to do the cape is a flexible spot if you want to know more about any of the builds that i mentioned just let me know and i'm gonna give you uh, an in-depth guide on every single one of them now we have the last entry on our list the demonic staff now the demonic staff under normal circumstances this would be the the s tier weapon overall it, it would have been amazing in terms of almost everything except pve but it got a huge nerf that i'm still very happy about very happy good about job, it. Mog. No, you're doing uh, hey, I know, I know. I, that, was that, 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 that was a great, you great, you great, great. Right. So this weapon right now doesn't work in corrupted dungeons, doesn't work in the mists, doesn't work in PVE, but it works better than those two weapons. So in my opinion, this is a C tier weapon because like this those two builds are unusable in terms of solo play like those two builds the damnation staff you cannot do anything with it in terms of solo play and the great curse staff you cannot do anything with it in terms of solo play you can do a little bit more than the damnation staff but it's still like compared to all the other option not good well with the demonic staff you could do a little bit more you could do a little just a tiny bit more but yeah it's uh, not very far away from being a d tier weapon like it's if i had like an extra thing i would put it right here in the middle i would put it right here in the middle right now it's a c tier like it works a little bit better if you're a good player you might be able to take advantage of this weapon even in pvp but compared to all the other options 
I don't know, man. I don't think it works. I've uh, readjusted the tier list a little bit and this is what we came up with. Because the one-handed curse staff is actually not that bad in terms of killing open world bosses and stuff like that and maybe even doing some Avalonian chests, I've decided to lift it up a little bit because if you remember, the thing that lowered this weapon in my on my tier list was the fact that it doesn't rework in PvE. Uh, and I'm looking at it in terms of versatility. I also judged every single weapon based on how it performs in specific types of content. But like I wanted to give an overview overall rating. And I feel like the overall rating of the one-handed curse staff needs to be higher than the rating of the life curse staff. And the overall rating of the shadow caller needs to be lower than the curse staff. Like, I cannot leave the shadow caller right next to the curse call and the curse staff. Because honestly, they're better weapons. They're better, better weapons. Now, of course, in terms of PvE, again, shadow caller, S tier absolute. is the only S tier uh, curse staff in terms of PvE. But this is an overall rating. This is an overall rating. And I feel like overall, if you want to get into to a curse staff let me tell you how to interpret the information that i just gave you if you want to start playing curse staffs start with those weapons if you don't like any of those try those if you don't like any of those try those if you don't like any of those maybe you don't like the, the to be honest i'm not sure even if you should try those two i'm not sure if uh, the d tier weapons like this s tier would be amazing start with this everybody should play this a tier is a you like the weapon line those are awesome b tier is ah if you don't like the first two options, maybe you like those two. And everything below C tier is kind of like, hey, maybe try a different weapon line. Uh, that's kind of how this uh, reads in my book. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below and in the chat. I want to see your guys' opinion. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown. This video was made possible by our amazing channel members. If you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself, you are going to get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams, member only polls and lots of other awesome perks. Shout out to all of you awesome badasses. Thank you so much for supporting us.